Functions in DAML capture the logical aspect of a workflow that we want to model in a smart contract. In this lesson, we'll start with writing simple functions, introduce a few notations, and then write a simple test script to test out the functions. Let's start with creating a file called functions.daml. The first line in this file we'll write is module functions where. There are a few rules for a module. This statement declares the module and must have the same name as the file name. It has to be the first statement, and all module names must start with a capital letter. To declare a function, we first provide its signature. A function signature has the function's name and must start with a lowercase letter. In this example, the name of the function is increment. Then, there are data types separated by arrow notations. The data types listed first in the signature are the data types of the input arguments. You can have multiple input arguments. The last data type of a signature is always the expected result. DAML has strong type checking, so you'll get an error if the data type of the actual results doesn't match the expected data type in the signature. In this example, the signature of the increment function means that it takes one argument of type int and produces a result of type int. For example, we say that this function increment maps an int value to another int value. So the right arrow can be read as maps to. The next line contains the actual definition or implementation of the function. So if we call the increment function with a value n, it'll be mapped to n plus one. Notice that unlike imperative languages where we often pass arguments inside of parentheses, the arguments in DAML functions are listed next to the function name and separated by a space. Let's look at how we'll test this function. In DAML, testing is an integral part to writing templates. To write a test, we start by writing a script, which requires importing the DAML.script library into this module. Then we declare a test script. A script in DAML is also a type of function that captures an action written inside a do block. A do block gives us an easy way to run multiple expressions. We'll only use one in this example, but it's a good practice to follow for test scripts. Here in the declaration, we first give the name of the script test functions, followed by a colon. Notice that there are no data types mentioned here, which means there are no input arguments. The empty parentheses indicate that the script returns nothing. Then, we define the function by writing its name followed by equal sign, and then script, followed by a do block. And inside this do block, we have just one statement, which is a call to the debug function. Debug is a function that prints a value to the script results. We use this function for testing and debugging purposes. The dollar sign following debug is a shorthand notation or syntactic sugar. You can think of it as parentheses that enclose what needs to be printed. We want to print the result of the increment function when we pass three to it. So the dollar sign first gets the result of the increment function and then passes it to the debug function, which get printed to the script results as four. So let's try this all in DAML Studio. We'll start by creating a new project. With the DAML SDK installed, open a terminal where you'd like to start the project and enter DAML new functions. Then change directory and open the files in the folder in Visual Studio Code with DAML Studio. The DAML SDK provides some boilerplate code, and if we look in the DAML folder and open the main.daml file, you'll notice a few things here that we've already discussed. There are functions and do blocks here with script tags as well. For now, we'll delete all of this except the module main where line up the top. Now we can write our increment function. Just like before, we'll start with the function signature. Notice that we get some squiggly lines here from the DAML SDK linter saying this signature lacks an accompanying binding. Well, let's do that with the function declaration. That's better. Now we write the script to test it. Ideally, we would write our test code in a separate module, but to keep it simple, we'll write it in the same file for now. Again, we get the signature lacks an accompanying binding error, but also an error saying script is not in scope. Remember, we need to import daml.script and we need to write our script function declaration. So here's the test functions script declaration and then the definition as tests functions equals script do. 
To write the next statement inside this block, we need to indent expressions that are in the do block. DAML is a white space sensitive language, so the scope of whatever we write is based on how deep it is indented inside a block. So we'll indent and write the debug statement as debug dollar sign increment three. Once everything compiles in the background, you'll see a clickable statement saying script results. Click on it and the script will run and you'll see the result in another tab. So this is how we write and test functions in DAML. Remember how we mentioned the dollar sign is replacing the use of parentheses? Let's test that by writing another expression with debug that will take the function of increment four in parentheses. And just to practice some more, let's write one more function. This time we'll add two numbers of type int. We'll start with the function signature add followed by a colon. This function will take two integers as arguments and map them to a value of type int. So we need to write int, arrow, int, arrow, int. Now the function's definition. Here we say add x, y equals x plus y. To test this, we simply add another debug statement. Debug dollar sign add three, three. Our script updates the trace section and we see the results. One last thing before we move on. The function signature you provided is to some extent redundant because DAML can infer the type of arguments and return value for the function definition you provided. So if you remove the signature for increment, you'll see that the compiler automatically fills in the inferred type. We can do the same for the signature for add, but it comes up slightly more cryptic. In this example, the add function takes a, where a is a type of additive. That is something which can be added. Additive is a class in DAML, and you'll learn more about classes such as additive and multiplicative in the future. For now, try writing some functions to multiply two numbers, or maybe compute a complex expression. Let's review what we covered. Functions are declared inside a module. A function requires a signature and a definition. The signature specifies the function name and the data types of its arguments and return values are separated by right arrows. The function definition specifies the actual implementation. To test a function, we can write a script that calls the function and passes the required number of parameters. And we print the return value by calling the debug function and passing the function to it with the dollar sign notation or parentheses.